Aroga video, the placenta part two. Welcome back. In the first part, we discuss more the normal anatomy and normal physiology and the early development of the placenta. And now we will focus on, in part two, we will focus on the some variations in anatomy, pathology, and we finish uh, with some conclusions. Variations in the anatomy. Here we have a placenta with a so-called succurientate lobe. That means there is, here we see the umbilical cord, the main placenta, and there's a small island in front of the coast. That's the small lobe here. And in the membranes, here depicted as yellow, we see blood vessels. So this is a situation where it's important that we check that the placenta is complete. Another variation is the so-called bilobed placenta, where the placenta has two lobes. One lobe here, another lobe there, and there is a more a broader connection. And of course, blood vessels in, those, in the connecting uh, bridge, as it were. Uh, in these situations, of course, it's important that we check the placenta extra carefully for completeness. And one can imagine that this placenta could there could be a rupture here when delivering the placenta in the third stage of labor. Here another variation, and it's called, you can see, it's called, you see a, a, a wall here. Um, that's why it's called a circumvallate placenta. Um, the membranes actually are double packed over the fetal surface. This is the fetal surface, this is the umbilical cord. And it appears that the chorionic plate, so the other side of the placenta, this part of the placenta is too small. So we have just here a thick wall and circumvallate placenta has no um, other meaning. It's not uh, associated with pathology or growth restriction. It's just a variation which usually is noted after the baby is born. Here is another variation. Have a look. What are your thoughts about this? We see here the main placenta, shortly after the placenta is delivered, and the umbilical cord starts not here in the center of the placenta, but in the margin of the placenta. And that's why it's called a marginal insertion of the umbilical cord. Here again, the risk could be that in the third stage, when we do controlled tr cord traction, that the placenta might separate from the umbilical cord. And another variation here, and look, this is the umbilical cord, and here are the membranes. Interesting, the umbilical cord is inserted not in the placenta, but in the membranes. Blood vessels cross over the membranes, and this is a situation known as the Wilmentus cord insertion. The risk, of course, think for a second or two, what are the risks? If this part of the placenta, where the arrow is, would sit on top of the cervix, that could result in ruptured vasa previa. So the vasa previa means the vessels run on top of this internal os of the cervix. That could result in antepartum hemorrhage when those vessels would rupture, and that would almost in a few seconds uh, result in the fetus exsanguinating and passing away. It's part of the differential diagnosis of interpartum hemorrhage. In the third state of labor, of course, when we want to deliver the placenta, this could result that the cord snaps off here. That means the placenta will be retained and we have to go to the operating theater to do a so-called manual removal of the placenta. Those were a few variations of the placenta and the umbilical cord. Here's another one. That's quite intuitive. This is a so-called true knot in the umbilical cord. Have a look. Have a look close to this part of the umbilical cord and that part. So you see here, it's slightly edematous. It's a bit wider. This is a bit more narrow. So the blood flow has, going, has been going from this uh, side to that side. But in this situation, 
the fetus was still perfused quite well and it had no dramatic consequences. Here we see another example, an incidental finding after the baby was born. The baby is born with perfect APCA scores and here we see a true knot in the umbilical cord and apparently no impact on the growth of the baby or the oxygenation, so that's wonderful. And because uh, this is probably the protective effect from the Wharton jelly which makes the, uh, the umbilical cord uh, less easy to compress, a variation cross-section of the umbilical cord. Usually we have two arteries and one vein and here we have just one artery and one vein in a cross-section. I discussed this as well in the video about um, for, uh, screening in pregnancy, the morphology scan where you see an example and an ultrasound scan of this. Okay, more pathology. What is this? The next picture I would like to warn you because it's, yeah, if you've never seen this before it could be slightly confronting. We see here unfortunate and uh, a baby who passed away in the uterus, an intrauterine fetal death. And you see in the background the fetal part of the placenta and look what happened. The fairly short umbilical cord has actually wrapped tightly around the fetal neck and that unfortunately will have contributed to fetal demise. This is a so-called nuchal cord. Another variation, we look now at the maternal surface of the placenta and have a close look to the placenta and the umbilical cord. What is your take? Of course, you might have recognized the true knot in the, uh, in the uh, umbilical cord. And more importantly, look at the placenta. You can see here in a couple of white patches, and these are known as infarct as a result of necrosis in the, in, the villa, in the villus, secondary to local obstruction of maternal uterine placenta circulation. So these areas of the placenta were no longer well perfused. And it's also of note that the uh, umbilical cord is fairly thin and that makes it more vulnerable. So when you look at this placenta, it's, it's clear that this was a mother suffering from preeclampsia in the combination with a growth restricted fetus. So that's a classical combination of placental inefficiency due to infarctions in the placenta. The next picture is a very a torted umbilical cord which is associated with fetal death. It's not completely clear whether this contributes to fetal death or it could be an effect after the fetus has passed away in utero. But in a hyper, hyper coiled uh, umbilical cord, that's how we describe it. The next one, this is the placenta and you have to realize that the umbilical cord here has been removed as were the membranes, but we're looking at the fetal uh, um, surface of the uh, placenta and you can see a remarkably green stain. This is a meconium stained placenta uh, after, shortly after the baby uh, was born. So the baby um, showed decelerations during labor and uh, hence has produced meconium. This is an other placenta. Now we look at the maternal surface of the placenta and you might have already acknowledged uh, seen here some infarcts some white areas but what is this is what is this this is the typical picture of a reta retroplacental clot or hematoma this is part of a partial abruption of the placenta and this placenta was delivered after the baby was born via an emergency lower segment cesarean section. So, how would this patient have presented? Well, of course, enter part of hemorrhage with CTG abnormalities, 
without, uh, and that necessitated a uh, crash, an urgent caesarean section. The baby came out all right. And we have here now uh, followed a few more, uh, yeah, fairly curly placenta uh, pictures. We look here at the fetal surface of a placenta. Have a closer look and think twice. What are we looking at? This is a monozygotic twin with one chorion, so the placentas are shared by the two fetuses and also only one amniotic sac. This is a very rare situation and is associated with quite a few complications. But just to show you, we have here the one umbilical cord, there's the second umbilical cord and there is one placenta. Between these umbilical cords there is no dividing membrane, no amniotic sac. Hence monochorionic, so one placenta, and monoamniotic, one uh, sac, no separating amnion. Okay, what do you think we're looking at here? This is quite a challenging question, but just to show you um, rare conditions. Here is, we look at, uh, zoom in at the fetal surface of a placenta, of a twin pregnancy. This is the amnion, the dividing membrane. So the fetus had two, um, they had a separate amniotic sac, but here we see a connecting vessel which has been filled with milk. And we can see that this vessel connects from one side of the placenta to the other. So we have a monochorionic diamniotic twin and connecting vessels. This is a situation higher, where there's a higher risk for the so-called uh, typical complication. That's the twin-to-twin -twin transfusion syndrome, TTTS, where one fetus becomes anemic and the other pletoric. And that's a, a, a rare complication which we have to be very mindful of. Another one, have a closer look at the maternal surface of this placenta. You can see here a typical appearance of scattered grape large structures or vesicles and that's linked with gestational trophoblastic disease or molar pregnancy or mole. For further details, I would like to refer you to the Deroga video, Early Pregnancy Part 3, which deals with gestational trophoblastic disease as well. So, mesmerizing, I think, if you look at the placenta, what it all does to uh, ensure fetal well-being, fetal growth, fetal growth and fetal oxygenation. In conclusion, the placenta is a fascinating, indispensable organ, essential for the exchange of oxygen and CO2, so the oxygenation of the fetus. It has an important essential metabolic function. It passes glucose directly from maternal serum to the fetus and a hormonal function and various hormonal functions which are outside the scope of this video. I would all people involved in deliveries recommend to thoroughly inspect the placenta, the cord and the membranes, even if the mother and the baby appear to be doing very well. The first question to answer is, of course, is the placenta complete? And the second question, is there any pathology? And most certainly you will see what you're looking for. I hope that this video will improve your uh, visual capacities in this regard. Last but not least, um, Zen Master and Chief Jimmy wants to reassure you that we will have a few more videos online soon about placenta previa, placenta abruption, and placenta accreta. So all three major uh, placenta issues and complications. Thank you for your attention.